Hey guys, long time no speak. Uh, welcome back to my channel. This is Life Will Find A Way. And uh, this week we're going to do what I eat in a week as a vegan on Slimming World. I have made a seven day plan for you guys for under 35 pounds and all from Tesco. I'm planning to do a mini series of uh, the major supermarkets. So um, costed seven day plans for each of the major supermarkets just to give some ideas, stuff like that. So yeah, first one is Tesco. Um, sorry about my voice um, and if I sniff in this video because I'm really bunged up at the moment. So, um, and I've got a really sore throat, so my voice is quite croaky and I'm very aware of it. So I do apologize for that. Anyway, um, we are going to head to Tesco's with 35 pounds and we're gonna buy seven days worth of food. We're gonna make um, some meals. We're not gonna do all of our meal prep in one go because the food will go bad, but I have made it so we can do the vast majority of it on the first day, which, well, on the Sunday, and then we're planning to eat from Monday to Sunday. But yeah, um, I think we'd probably better head off, so let's go shopping. Okay, so I'm back from Tesco now. So this, my friends, is what £34.90 can buy you in Tesco to feed you for one week, three meals a day, seven days in a week. And you will have leftovers of things like the lentils, the pasta and the rice. So, oh and peas as well, you have them left over and onions. So a couple of small things, um, I, had to buy a net of limes instead of one lime. So that is included in £34.90. But actually I've just realised, so on my list, I said buy one lime. One lime costs 35, uh, 30 pence, but this net costs £1.50. Um, they didn't have any loose limes. So I had to get the net because I wanted a lime very much. Um, but this is good. So I spent an extra £1.20 getting those. Um, although actually no, because these are £1.50 each per net, but they're on offer at the moment, which they quite often are for um, two for two fifty. So let me think. I planned in one fifty for five lemons and thirty p for one lime, so that's one eighty. I've just spent two fifty, so that's an extra seventy p. Oh, and re onions as well. The original list, I was going to get three red onions and three white onions, 85 pence for three. I was going to get them loose if possible, but again, the loose ones are rubbish. And at the moment, they had three of these nets of three for one pound. So obviously, I wasn't going to spend the extra money and just buy three and a net of three of these, because that would have come to one pound 70. And as it was, I spent one pound on nine white onions and an extra 25p on a uh, red onion. So I saved myself 45 pence. So yeah, things like that. I did try not to buy things on offer, but it is really hard to avoid sometimes as I found today. And it just didn't make sense to avoid some things. So yeah, um, the list will be different depending on when you go. But in general, this is a fairly accurate list. And things like soy sauce wouldn't normally buy uh, every single week, but as I said, I wanted this list to be as self-contained as possible, so that's why I bought it. The passata, please note I got the one with garlic and herbs because that was um, to try and stop extra purchases. Um, where possible, I've gone for cheaper things like these Growers Harvest Garden Peas. They cost 62 pence as opposed to Tesco's own, which like £1.50 or something. Um, 
Linda family sausages. That's the only fake meat we've got. We've got some tofu. We've got this coconut milk, which is phenomenal. Um, yeah. And I always like these stew packs, although they come in packaging, they're quite good value. You get a swede, a parsnip, some carrots, and a teeny onion, and that's a quid. So I always think they're quite good. If you're stuck for money, these always make a really good basis for a meal. So you've always got food if you've got a pound. So yeah, let's get prepping. Okay, the easiest way to do this is pop all your dry things in the pans. I'm sorry about my reflection, uh, or shadow, should I say, down there. <laughs> um, so we've got the pasta in one pan. You want to make enough pasta for three portions for you. So um, it just depends how much you eat, really. Um, I got whole wheat pasta because I always buy whole wheat pasta. So maybe you got white pasta, that's cool, that's up to you, they're the same price. Um, but yeah, so you'll have some pasta left over, so that's yours for another day. Lentils, um, I have used 150 grams. So for me, that's enough for two good portions for lunches. You need enough for two lunches with roasted vegetables. Obviously lentils are protein. So here are my lentils, 150 grams, and that's my Tesco stock pot on top of it, looking very gooey. Um, I normally I get the, the gnaw ones, but um, the cost was not decent uh, for this budget. Anyway, and then we've got some quinoa and we are using the whole bag of quinoa because we need five portions and that makes about 60 gram portions, which should be sufficient. Three breakfasts and two dinners. So yeah, that is a whole bag of quinoa. Now, a lot of people say cook um, lentils and quinoa, things like that to the package instructions. I cook everything like pasta. So just chuck a load of water on and then let it boil. When it's cooked, drain it off. It's very simple. You don't have to measure anything and you get a good result every time. So we're gonna get those boiling and while they're cooking, we're gonna prep everything to go in the oven. Okay, I have my pasta, quinoa and lentils all boiling. So the next thing we're gonna do is prepare our root vegetables for our soup. And that's gonna go in the fourth pan. I'll show you what to do, but literally chop everything up. Obviously peel the swede and the onion. If you wanna chuck an extra onion in, do so. I'm going to, um, cause I have the spare ones. Um, I'm gonna pop a small amount of water. Just boiled in there. Add our onion and garlic. Oh, by the way, when you do any prep, just get one of your food recycling bags ready on the side and then it's nice and easy to keep everything together. Either that or um, have a bowl ready to transfer everything. So there we go. We're going to sauté that off in some water. While that's sautéing, I'm going to quickly chop the veg for roasting. Okay, sorry about the noise. Obviously everything's cooking. Just quickly, the veg that we're going to prep for the lentil salad is one red onion, one courgette, half of your aubergine and one pepper. It doesn't matter which color, it's entirely your choice. The other half of the aubergine we're not using until Saturday evening, so you definitely need to cover it up. I have nothing other than cling film right now, so I'm using cling film. I'm not sure what else would keep it decent, so um, that's up to you, but definitely, definitely cover this because it's another few days before we're gonna use it. Okay, these are the tomatoes, and I've also put three cloves of garlic on the tray. These are gonna be for the pea pesto, just because to take the edge off it being raw garlic. Um, the tomatoes are gonna to be stirred into the pesto pasta once it's done. And then obviously I've got my veg for the lentil salad with some garlic over the top. I used three cloves. And then both of these have been sprayed lightly with fry light. I don't usually, bleh, I don't usually use fry light, but occasionally it is useful. And this is one of those times just to stop the garlic catching. Oh my God, I find meal prep so stressful, <laughs> but it's fine because we're doing everything at once and then it's all just gonna be done. My quinoa is done, so I've drained it and I've just got my sieve sitting over my saucepan while it drains, it's not on, it's uh, just somewhere for it to sit. The lentils are still going, I just added a bit more water. They take normally about 30 minutes to cook, so um, that's fine. These onions and garlic have been on for a little while. I need to get the veg in. Obviously I've got the um, med veg and the 
uh, tomatoes in there. The tomatoes are on the top because um, I want them to go like crispy and then, sorry about the mess on the side. And then the pasta was done. So I've drained it just using the lid because I want to just keep that moist a minute. And also I didn't drain all the water. I've left in about a couple of tablespoons in the bottom because um, that'll help the pesto sort of loosen up through it. Once the swede, parsnip and carrot are all chopped up, just chuck them in the big pan and then I'm just gonna give it a stir and um, add some stock and hot water and just let that boil until those veggies are cooked. Anyway, while um, our veggies are boiling, you can see I've got the stock cube in there and water just covering the vegetables. We're going to get the quinoa portioned out and then that's that done with. Right, all done. So in this one, I've got 12 tablespoons, I mean heaped ones, it was just a way of counting it, it's not a measurement. Um, so 12 in there, so that's six per dinner portion, and these have four in each for my breakfast portions. So they're about two thirds a portion compared to this one. This is two in here, remember. Okay, the light's even worse, so I'm really sorry about that. See how sunny it is. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> um, we're gonna make the um, homemade baked beans while, let me stand there, there we go. Um, we're gonna make the homemade baked beans whilst the soup is still cooking and the veg is roasting in the oven. So we've got our, let me just leave them there, tomato passata with garlic and herbs. I've got a tin of pinto beans and a tin of cannellini beans. You can actually use kidney beans, haricot beans. You could even use chickpeas if you wanted to, or lottie beans. Flagellet if you fancied it. Um, trying to think of some more beans. Black beans, black eyed beans, any beans you like. But I've gone for cannellini and pinto because they're both really like toothsome and nice and I like having two different color beans. So that's that. Then we've got three cloves of garlic, one onion, and that's your basic recipe. But I would recommend if you have some in the cupboard, add some smoked paprika. Um, this is gonna just help enhance your recipe so yeah but if you don't have it it's totally cool if you've got some mixed herbs you can throw those in if you've got some any other spices some cumin non-smoked paprika just normal if you've got some cayenne pepper chuck anything in it's just going to make it taste really good but that's why i said get the garlic the tomato passata with garlic and herbs because then at least you've got some flavor as well coming from there but it's going to taste good regardless so I'm going to repurpose the saucepan that I've just used to make my quinoa because that is, of course, now empty. Two things. Number one, we have onion and garlic simmering in a small amount of water ready for the baked beans. Second, the tomatoes and garlic are ready. The tomatoes are just to be stirred into the pea pesto pasta and the garlic is to go in the pesto itself. Okay, I've got the peas in the blender. Um, I forgot to get them out earlier to defrost, so we'll just let them sit there for a bit. Um, and I've put my roast garlic in there to get it out of the way. The amount of peas I used is a total guess. Um, I've used about 400 grams. If you don't have scales, that's just under half the bag. So hopefully this will work out well. I don't know, I'm just making it up really. Also, I forgot to say, I've took the roast vegetables out the oven, gave them a good stir, and I've put them back on the top shelf. So they're probably only gonna need about another 10 minutes or something. Right, I've put the smoked paprika in my onion and garlic. I used about a tablespoon. As I said, this is entirely optional. If you have it, do add it because it's really, really good. So now, let's do that so it bounces. So now I've got my both my tins of beans drained. I didn't rinse them because I want them to be a little bit starchy, so. That's those. We're gonna stir that in and add the passata that I didn't get to hand. Do, do, do. Chuck all of that in. And that's literally it. We're just gonna let that cook down for a bit, give it a stir, see how I feel. And um, yeah, I reckon about 15 minutes I'll let this sit on the uh, oven for. So, on the hob for, sorry, not the oven. I mean, yeah, we'll just give that a good mix. And yeah, I think the soup veggies are nearly done now, so I'm gonna test those. I totally forgot to say to add in some salt and pepper because we're not using stock in this one. So I'm using a pinch like that, which is about a teaspoon of salt. This is only three portions, so that's about a third of a teaspoon per portion. And then um, I'm gonna add some, uh, there, some 
some black peppercorns, a fresh ground black pepper. You know what I mean, it's pepper. Um, but yeah, we're gonna let this bubble 15 minutes, I reckon. Right, these are done, so I'm going to blend. Right, I have added loads of black pepper and um, a small pinch of salt. As you can see, I only half blend it. I think it's more satisfying and I like it really, really thick. It's super satisfying when you do this. So I'm gonna portion it into my soup cups. Um, I'm gonna freeze these because they're not used until later in the week. And also it's gonna save space in my fridge. Oh, and also we're gonna add in some fresh herbs. You want one third of your packet of parsley and one third of your packet of chives. Chop them up, stir them in. I'll show you in a sec. It looks good, right? My soup actually made enough for both of my cups and I've also got a portion for another day. So that will also be going in the freezer. And that's a sin-free soup for another day that I haven't got to worry about. Okay, I've now dished up the homemade baked beans. You'll need three portions, so it's about two thirds of a tin per portion. And we're gonna freeze all three of these as well. Again, just to save some room in the fridge, that's my reason. You can keep um, two of them out if you want to, but one of them definitely should be frozen. Right, the veggies are now cooked. You can see some of them are nicely charred. They're all nice and soft, so that's good. Um, the lentils obviously were done earlier, so I put them in this bowl, they're virtually cool now. So um, we're gonna add this to this, give it a good mix. Then we're going to add the juice of two lemons and um, one third of a packet of chives, again, one third of a packet of parsley, again and some salt and pepper, and then that is our salad complete, ready for two lunches that we'll just need to portion out, ready to take to work. This won't be frozen, this just needs to go in your freeze, in your fridge, sorry. Okay, as you can see, I've dished up the lentil salad, or warm lentils, because you could heat this up if you wanted to, when you're gonna eat it. Um, as I said, it was the lentils, roast veg, a third of a um, pack each of parsley and chives, juice of two lemons, um, oh, I haven't put any salt and pepper on yet, but I will do in a sec, and then I've added eight green olives to each one, just halved, um, and that makes it one and a half sins each. This is obviously entirely optional. I did build olives into the budget, but if you don't like olives or you wanna replace it with capers or something like that, which is sin free, then go for it. But I, um, that's my little treat because the rest of the food is all sin free. Okay, in my blender, I have the peas, which I got fed up of waiting to defrost, so I microwave them, um, a whole packet of basil, the juice of two lemons, the three roasted garlic cloves from earlier, and uh, a big pinch of salt, about half a, te a teaspoon, sorry, and a load of um, ground black pepper. So I'm just gonna blend this and see what it turns out looking like. Right, this is the finished product with the pea pesto. Um, I had to add a big splash of water just to get it to this. And it's been blending for about five minutes, I kid you not. Um, it's still gonna be bitty, but that's fine because that's texture. But yeah, you do need to add a splash of water because um, I don't think the juice of the two lemons is quite enough. If you had an extra lemon, you could add another juice of another lemon. I promise we're nearly there. Right, so we've done our pea pesto and then I've divided up the roasted tomatoes between the three portions. These two are dinner portions and this one is for a lunch. So I think we've got a Monday dinner, Tuesday lunch, Wednesday dinner. And then with your bag of rocket, you're gonna put a third with each portion. Now I'm not gonna put it with the two dinner ones because I may heat them up, but I'm probably likely to have the work one cold. So I'm gonna put the rocket in now for that one. And that just gives a little bit extra speed, but also a different taste, because um, I think the peppery rocket will go quite well with the sweet tomatoes and the pesto, which is relatively sweet. Now, the other thing is, if you do have nutritional yeast in the house, then please do go ahead and add some nooch. I'm going to, because I think it'll go nicely. So, oh, there's an errant P. Oh, screw it, I just added it, there we go. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast to this one, ready, so it's ready, a work lunch ready to go. Um, and these two I'll probably add on the evenings when I eat them. I'm done, yes! Um, oh, I do find it quite boring meal prepping, but at the same time, it's so nice when you have that outcome. 
like that behind me. It just makes it all worth it. Right then, so what you need to do, this is the spare soup. So this is gonna be frozen regardless because it's nothing to do with the meal prep this week. Then we've got these two soups. One's being used on Wednesday and one on Saturday. So the one for Saturday, I'm gonna freeze. That one's on uh, Wednesday, so I'm not gonna freeze it. Then we've got the beans. So one's on Saturday, that's gonna be frozen. One's on Thursday. I'm gonna freeze that just because I'm running out of space in my fridge, but you don't need to. This one is for Tuesday, so that's not being frozen. Then we've got the pasta. Um, the pasta and also the lentil salad, they're not being frozen at all. Now the other thing that needs to go in the freezer is the bread. Um, and you can just defrost two slices the night before. You're gonna use it each time. Um, because we're not even using it till Tuesday, so let's keep it fresh by putting it in the freezer. Okay, final thing for Sunday prep day. We're just gonna get our quinoa ready for the morning. So this is for our first meal on the plan, which is Monday morning. Obviously I've got my measured portion of quinoa and I'm just gonna add some of the Alpro coconut milk. Um, I'm gonna add 200 mils. I know grams aren't the same as mils, but it's near as damn it. So that's what I'm doing. And then that's just gonna sit. Now, if you want to, you can add cinnamon. Um, I'm not going to, I just want it like it is. Um, in the morning, I'm probably just gonna microwave this. So um, yeah, but I want the quinoa to sit in it overnight to try and get a nice coconutty taste. Um, if you have fruit, you can add in banana, mango, pineapple, any fruit really, but exotic fruit would be particularly nice because it is a coconut one, which I've done deliberately just to make it more exciting. So this is the coconut milk. Um, this is a fresh one, so you have to keep it in the fridge. Um, on Swimming World, you can have 400 mils of this for your Healthy Extra A. So this is half of my Healthy Extra A, or one of them, should I say, half of one of my Healthy Extra A's for the day. So the others we're not gonna use, so they are free for you to do what you like with. But anyway, that's us done. I'll catch up with you tomorrow morning and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's Monday morning and I'm not on camera because I am super ill now, as you can probably hear from my voice. So I'm just gonna recap what we're going to eat today and I'm probably not gonna film again today because there's no need and we know what we're having. So for breakfast, just a reminder, we've got our quinoa porridge. We added 200 mils of coconut milk last night. And um, we are going to, well, I'm gonna microwave this. It's up to you, I can't get the lid off one hand, but I'm gonna microwave mine. It's up to you if you have yours cold or hot. For lunch today, we are having lentil salad. Um, this doesn't need anything adding to it. I added olives to mine, if you recall. Um, so mine is one and a half sins, but that's up to you if you want to do that. I'm really sorry about my voice. Finally for dinner tonight, we're having um, pea pesto pasta. I will be microwaving mine and then adding, um, this is two thirds, this is two thirds of the bag of Rocket left because um, I put one third in the pack up one. So use half of what's left in here, in here after it's been microwaved. And also I'll be adding some nutritional yeast to mine, which I have in the cupboard because I order it in bulk off Amazon. And that is one sin per tablespoon if you're gonna do the same. It's now Monday evening. You should have eaten your pasta for tea. So we're just gonna quickly get ready for tomorrow. You should have had one portion of homemade beans in the fridge and that is going to go with you to work tomorrow or at home if you don't eat breakfast at work and then you need to take your loaf and just have two pieces of bread from it mine is frozen and then i'm just gonna put mine in my pot ready to transport to work tomorrow so that's breakfast beans on toast that's going to go back in the freezer and then for lunch we're taking the pre-packed pea pesto pasta with rocket i'm sorry about my voice i'm really not very well and that's it i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye 
Morning guys, I'm still ill. Anyway, so I'm not at work. So I haven't really got much of an appetite, but I'm making myself have my beans on toast. So um, that's that for breakfast. I'm just gonna top mine with about a tablespoon of nutritional yeast for one sin. So that'll be nice. And then it's about a tablespoon. Okay, beautiful. And I've already got my pasta out for lunch later because I don't like it warm, uh, cold, sorry. And that's me, done. Hey guys, it's Tuesday night and we're gonna have chickpea salad and quinoa for tea. So this is everything that you need, except that we're just going to be using two thirds of our cucumber and we're only going to be using half of our bag of tomatoes. We're also going to be using one and a half tins of chickpeas. So I'm just going to quickly get this ready. Luckily it's a low maintenance dinner and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so this is half a tin of chickpeas. We're going to put this aside. This is for Saturday. We've used half the bag of tomatoes so you want to keep the other half in the fridge um, and this is the two-thirds of a cucumber and half a bag of tomatoes just chopped up so you can mix those in with the one and a half tins of chickpea right we're using one third of a bag of parsley one third of the bag of uh, chives and one third of your bag of coriander so you should be left with at this point one third of a bag of chives one third of a bag of parsley and two thirds of a bag of coriander. You should have opened this today. So chop these up, chop this in half, put these in and put the juice of the lemon in as well. Be generous with salt and pepper. I forgot to say in the plan to leave a little bit of red onion from uh, Sunday prep. So add that in if I've remembered to write that in the description, <laughs> but if not, then I've just found like two old spring onions in my fridge, so I'm just gonna throw those in. This is the double portion of quinoa, so pop half of this in your bowl. So this is half of the quinoa. Now you want to divide your chickpea salad, half in your bowl, half in a spare container. Okay, so I have just roughly chopped some of the spinach, so we'll pop that there. Just put some greenery. And then I've chopped up or halved 16 olives, so my bowl is three sins. I may add a tablespoon of seeds for six sins, but that's just because I've got them there. They're not on budget on the plant, so there we go. Um, that's dinner for tonight. And you should be walking away with half of the big portion of quinoa, half the salad again, plus half a tin of chickpeas left over. Hey guys, so it's Tuesday night. I completely forgot to prep for tomorrow. So to one of our single portions of quinoa, just add 200 mils of coconut milk. That's just so it can soak overnight. That's for your coconut porridge in the morning. Up to you if you eat it hot or cold, really. And then um, what we're taking for lunch, you need two of your pieces of bread. Well, frozen bread for toast and a portion of soup for toast as well, uh, for, for lunch as well. If you want to, you can cut up one of your carrots and take carrot sticks as well. That's all from me. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Morning guys, it's Wednesday today. Um, I've just heated up my quinoa porridge and I don't really fancy a hot coffee this morning so I'm gonna have a cold coffee which is um, this Califia farm stuff I just can't imagine putting in a hot drink really I just don't fancy it so um, I'm gonna have 400 mils of this one it's really good it's like an iced latte it's delicious I say 400 mils but that won't even fit in my thing I'll just have a little sip in a minute but yeah basically um, this is one and a half sins for uh, 100 mils. So I was gonna have six sins. And um, it's really, really tasty. Just a little bit different if you wanted to have um, a cold 
coffee in the summer. Don't forget for lunch today that we've got the soup and two pieces of your bread for your healthy extra B. Hey guys, welcome to my sofa. This is literally where I've been living for like four days now, just under my blanket with the heating on because um, sinusitis is killing me. Anyway, I just wanted to show you quickly that um, this porridge does go porridgey if you leave it for a while after you've heated it up. Hey guys, it's Wednesday night and just to prep for tomorrow breakfast and lunch, just take one of your portions of homemade baked beans from the freezer if you had them frozen. So that can defrost ready for the morning and you're gonna have that for breakfast with two pieces of bread from your wholemeal loaf for your healthy extra bee choice. And for lunch, it's lentil salad. Good morning, guys. Right, it's lunchtime. So I'm gonna have my lentil salad and I'm adding a tablespoon of mixed seeds and that's just for three sins. Um, as I said, this isn't included in the, um, the shop I've done for this week, but um, it is healthy to have seeds if you can. So um, it's just something that I always have in. Um, and afterwards, I'm probably gonna have a couple of clementines that my friend got me, um, which I'm very grateful for because I was really, um, really fancying oranges, because um, basically I'm really thirsty. Hey guys, it's Thursday night and um, we need to prep for tomorrow. So on your plan, tomorrow you've got um, your quinoa porridge for breakfast, a chickpea salad sandwich for lunch and carrot sticks if you want it and tofu uh, stir fry with rice for tea. Now I've mucked up a little bit because I forgot that I'm actually out tomorrow night. So I'm gonna make tofu stir fry for my lunch tomorrow. I'm also gonna make the chickpea salad for the filling of the sandwich, but I'm not gonna use mine until Sunday. Um, because that's when you're gonna have the other half of yours. But I'm gonna make it just to, just to show you in the meantime. For the tofu, this is optional, but if you have some sriracha or any other hot sauce or chili sauce, then pop a tablespoon of that in a small bowl, plus two tablespoons of soy sauce. Mix it all together. Chop your tofu in half and put half aside and you're keeping that until Sunday morning. Chop up the tofu you're gonna use on Friday and just spread it. You can chop it as large as you want. I just do it into these slightly larger than bite-sized chunks. Spread them out. Then you're gonna coat them in your sriracha soy mixture. If you don't have sriracha or any other type of sauce, just use soy sauce. So you can probably hear in the background that I do have the oven preheating, but um, so you should have done that, sorry if I didn't tell you. So just coat your tofu in your sriracha soy mixture as best you can. Give it a mix together with your hands, that's all I do. Spread it out a bit, and then you're just gonna bake it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, now that your tofu is in the oven ready for tomorrow night's stir fry, you want to chop up all your veggies. Now, I'm obviously gonna cook mine because I'm having this tomorrow lunch, but you're gonna want to um, just prepare them and pop them in a pot ready for tomorrow night. Um, so just to save you time. Um, I always find on a Friday night, I never feel like preparing food. So it's a really good idea to have something prepared. So at least with this, you've done the lion's share of it. The tofu will be cooked and ready to go. And this is all chopped up and all you have to do is stir fry it. So obviously I'm gonna have mine now. So what I'm gonna show you now is what to do tomorrow. I mean, it's so basic, it's a stir fry. I'm just gonna pop the, the gas on and I'm popping in a little bit of water. It's plenty. The veggies in here are half a red pepper, half a yellow pepper. Basically, you just want one pepper. It doesn't matter what color. I've just done it for colors, really. Uh, one carrot, uh, about a third of your head of broccoli, one white onion, halved and sliced thickly, and a third of your packet of mushrooms. So you should have two thirds left. Um, and two cloves of garlic. Um, and then when you serve this, you're going to, you can cook some rice to have with yours. I'm not going to because it's for a lunch and that'll be too much. Um, I prefer not to be too carby at lunch generally. So when you do yours, you can serve it over rice 
with additional soy sauce and also you're going to use a third of your packet of coriander and that's that's going to be your Friday tea sorted along with the tofu of course so oh and you, you're eating the whole amount of tofu so half a block but you know the whole amount that you've made into um, into the sriracha soy tofu anyway that's steaming nicely so now I'm going to show you how to make your chickpea salad to go in your sandwich for lunch tomorrow. Okay, I'm sorry about the noise in the background. Obviously my veggies are cooking. Basically, mush up your chickpeas with the back of a fork or with a potato masher until they're nice and flaky. Okay, then you're going to add in all your fillings. Now, I've put, I had some gherkins, so I'm adding gherkins to mine, but that's okay. If you don't like them or you don't, want, don't have any, then you don't have to. Then you're adding half your cucumber, well, your, your half cucumber that's left. Um, half a red pepper. And half a red onion. Again, because I only bought the one because I didn't really think ahead. I've got these crusty old spring onions, so <laughs> I'm just having those instead. Then you're just going to stir it all together and add in the juice of a lemon. Then you want to season the mixture really well with some black pepper and a decent pinch of salt. Now at this point, it's up to you what you do. Um, you can either have it like this, which is absolutely fine. So all you need to do is take two of your pieces of um, a whole grain, what is it, whole wheat bread and um, put it together before you go, put it together and work, do whatever you want, um, that's fine. Um, when I serve mine, I was going to put some mustard on it, but I'm now thinking I might stir it in. Um, I've got this mustard, which is really good. Um, don't forget to sin it if you have some mustard. Um, yeah. And I also forgot to say about the stir fry just now, you have to sin sriracha. Um, I think it's one sin per tablespoon. So make sure you do that if you use sriracha. But yeah, this is it for the chickpea salad. So that's your lunch tomorrow sorted. Your dinner is sorted because you're cooking your tofu and you've prepped your veg. And breakfast is quinoa. So you're just gonna add some milk to that in a moment as we have done. I'm adding 200 mils of coconut milk as usual. That's the whole of tomorrow's food sorted. I totally forgot to say that you're using half of your mixture tomorrow. Um, the other half is being reserved for Sunday and um, you're using the whole tin of chickpeas. I've just used half of everything because um, because I'm not having mine tomorrow. Hey guys, I'm feeling a lot better now, although it may not sound it. Uh, or maybe look it, but I am honestly so much better. I felt rough this week. So I'm so sorry that this video has not turned out really how I wanted it to, but I have tried to show you um, everything that I could every day um, to hopefully help you uh, come up with some new vegan ideas. Um, so uh, today is Friday and um, I had the chickpea, uh, sorry, <laughs> the quinoa, porridge for lunch, sorry it still really hurts to smile, the quinoa porridge for breakfast should I say. I had my stir fry for lunch and you guys would have had your chickpea salad sandwich and then you're having stir fry for tea and I'm going out so sorry about that, <laughs> it's an off plan meal. I'm going to Bella Italia which is quite fun because they've got loads of vegan options so I will actually show you what I'm going to have because um, it's always fun to just have a little look enviously um, but yeah sorry that that's not on plan um, and then I don't think we need to do any prep for tomorrow morning but I'll need to double check when I'm home tonight so because uh, I'm getting a haircut tomorrow morning so need to be up and out um, and that's really it for me I just wanted to show you my face to show you I'm still here and I am um, I am feeling much better now, so that's good. Um, thank you for sticking with me if you've come this far. We actually ended up going to Pizza Express and I had their new vegan meze. Before bed, take your last soup and your last beans from the freezer so they can defrost overnight. Hey guys, so it's Saturday morning and I'm feeling rough again, yay. I think maybe I overdid it a bit yesterday. So um, 
I don't really feel hungry right now, but um, we're gonna go get our fry up started because we're gonna use the oven for the vast majority of it. So um, let's go do that. Take three of the sausages and your two big tomatoes. Pop them on your uh, baking tray or mat or whatever you use. And then we're gonna pop those in the oven for as long as it takes the sausages to cook, which I think is about half an hour. Meanwhile, slice up one third of the mushroom pack, so half of what you had left. Chop up your mushrooms and two cloves of garlic. I've added mine to a pan that I sprayed with Fry Light. Um, this pan says it doesn't need it, but for some things it does, and mushrooms, it does help. Okay, so at this point, we can just leave everything for about 20 minutes because we don't need to do anything more until the sausages are nearly done. Right, sorry about all the noise. Um, I've got my beans heating up in the microwave. I've got my mushrooms and garlic going, and in the oven, my sausages and tomatoes are virtually done. Right, when the mushrooms are nearly done, add in most of your remaining spinach. Okay, so that's everything dished up, ready to go. It looks pretty good, if I say so myself. And um, I'm just gonna pop a bit of salt and pepper on. Um, that's breakfast, this is totally sin free and obviously loads of speed on there. Hi everyone, so it's time for dinner. So first of all, oh that's not working is it? First of all, we're gonna put our rice out. Right, that's better. So this is 150 grams of our basmati rice. Um, I'm actually doing enough for two portions because I suspect that this curry will make enough for two lots. Okay, next thing is prep your one onion and three cloves of garlic and spray the pan with fry light if you wish. I've put a tiny bit on because it helps. I'm also adding a splash of water, stop things sticking, and then we're gonna pop this on as well. While that's uh, going, we're going to prep the rest of the veggies for the curry. Obviously, we've got the rice boiling nicely over. Right, so my onion and garlic is pretty much ready for the other stuff to be added now. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to colour, so that's good. I don't really want to add any more water because it does go mushy if you do too much with onion. So I'm just going to pop in some curry paste. Now, I've got this um, Flying Goose brand, Green Knit Thai curry paste. And this stuff is £1.50 for this great big tub, 400 grams. Um, the Tesco own jars of green curry paste or any curry paste are £1.50 as well, but they are at least half the size, if not slightly smaller. So this one's much better value if you've got it. Um, I've got a big Tesco, so I'm quite lucky that I can get, they've got quite a good like Asian aisle. So I'm gonna start with one tablespoon of this for one sin, and I might add more later in the process if um, it's not flavored enough. So you just wanna get this frying off. Now in the meantime, I did chop my veggies, so we've got your half an aubergine that you saved from earlier in the week. You want a third of your head of broccoli, so that should be half of what you have left. One courgette, this is your last courgette. One carrot, if you have one left, um, if you didn't use it all for carrot sticks, so that's cool. And then I've got, and then one pepper in total. Um, I've used half yellow and then half of my last red pepper, so now you should just have half a pepper left ready for tomorrow morning. Um, I've also got the cherry tomatoes out. We should have half a bag left at this point. I'm gonna use half of this, so a quarter of a bag in here, and then the rest will be used tomorrow morning. Okay. I actually added two tablespoons in the end, because it smells so good, and I've added a splash of water just to stop it sticking. I'm just gonna pop in uh, all the veggies except for the okay. broccoli. Give the veggies a good stir about, make sure they're all nicely coated with the onion, garlic, and Thai curry paste mixture, and um, cook them down for a little bit. Then we're gonna chuck in some coconut milk. Now, if you have a tin of light coconut milk, that is 12 sins um, for the whole tin, so you can use half if you're making one portion, or a quarter. You can use part coconut milk from a tin and part coconut milk, your Alpro one, um, which obviously you can take from your healthy extra A, or you can just completely use the Alpro coconut milk. So it's entirely up to you at this point. 
how sinful, as it were, you want to make this dish. Um, it's pretty good with the Alpro coconut milk. I'd just say add it a bit of time because it is thinner and you really want it to try and thicken up. So cook it down a little bit each time and then add a bit more maybe. I'm using a tin personally because I really love Thai curry. I really love coconut milk from a tin. And I've got this in the spare. Okay, my veg has been sauteing for about four or five minutes now. So we're gonna throw in our coconut milk. Like I said, you can use coconut milk from a tin. You can use the Al Pro or a mixture of both. Um, this is, as I said, Tesco light coconut milk. And uh, 12 sins for the whole tin. So right now, my whole curry with the curry paste and the coconut milk is 14 sins. So for two portions, it's gonna be seven sins a portion. So this is looking really good. Um, you should have your half tin of chickpeas left over from the other day. So throw those in there. Right. Um, I have added another tablespoon of curry paste because I felt I could take it. Or I could take it, should I say. So um, this has all been cooking now for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna pop my broccoli on top because I don't want it to cook too quick. Um, I'm gonna try and resist the urge to stir that because <laughs> um, I think I want some overcooked broccoli. I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit as well and uh, we'll go from there. Right, so while we're waiting, um, I've got my last third of a pack of coriander, although I think I was a bit over-enthusiastic the other day, so I've actually only got less than a third, but hey-ho. And um, if you got two limes, then chop two limes in half, and if you had one lime, then have your one lime, and that's um, all we need to do, really. Chop up your coriander, and we're just really waiting for the veggies to cook. Right, I've just dished my rice up, so I am um, just waiting for my uh, broccoli just to finish off. Um, I put the lid on just to help it steam without losing any more moisture and uh, then I will dish up. Right, I have dished up and uh, this is the one I'm having tonight because I've got my coriander on there, my half a lime. Um, before I dished up the actual curry, I squeezed in the juice of the one and a half other limes and then I've just got this one to squeeze on top when I eat it. And this one is um, also on rice, and that's going to be my dinner next, well, on Monday. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, if you've got a spare portion as well, because um, I did allow quite a lot of veggies for this one. Um, if you, so if you have a second portion, then, um, then you can freeze it if you want, or do what I've done and plate it up ready for another day. Morning, guys. It's Sunday morning, and we're going to make a tofu scramble for our breakfast. Um, basically this is the time when you're using up all your odd bits of uh, veggies and herbs that you've got left over. So I've got a quarter of a bag of tomatoes, I've got my last third of a bag of mushrooms, I'm using an onion, I use my last little bit of garlic, um, the last third of a bag of parsley and chives each, uh, oh, I've got half a red pepper in the fridge and obviously our half block of tofu. Okay, just get your onion and garlic sauteing. I'm using a small amount of spray olive oil this morning, so you can have five sprays of that for uh, half a tin. So I use this one, just because we haven't got any other tins planned in today. I do prefer olive oil really to fry that. So, yep, yeah, get this sauteing, and then we're gonna add in the other veggies once this has got going. Okay, so add in your pepper, your sliced mushrooms, and your half tomatoes. Take your tofu and crumble it in point season it. I've used some salt, some pepper and a few chipotle chili flakes. I'm also adding a bit of smoked paprika. Add your chopped up herbs and you can serve it all up. I'm enjoying mine outside on this beautiful day. Look at that sky. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to read my new book. Okay, it's lunchtime on Sunday and I have lightly toasted my two pieces of bread and I've got my lovely chickpea sandwich filling obviously crammed in there so it's going to go everywhere when I eat it but I don't care. Um, I mixed mine with a little bit of mustard like I said I was going to and um, I've already tried a little bit and it is lush so look at the filling in there. <laughs> Thoroughly recommend it. 
Hey, it's Sunday evening and I totally forgot to um, film this tiny little bit of prep. But anyway, I'm using an extra, oh, I'm using an extra onion. Um, so I've just quartered that, uh, my three sausages and some baby new potatoes. And um, I'm just roasting all of this together. And then we're just gonna have it with some peas and some broccoli. So I'm actually having this at my friend's house. I'm just cooking it and then I'm gonna pop it all in a bowl and then take it round later. So, um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. So I think we'll end it here. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this somewhat epic video. Um, it's a much longer one than I intended it to be, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, but I do hope that it's given you some good ideas. Um, I'm not appearing on camera because I look horrendous. I went out for a walk earlier and it's really hot. And uh, yeah, I am not in a position to be seen in public right now. But anyway, I've just finished um, getting everything ready to upload. So um, we've got the meal plan. And I've included a link in the description for you that has obviously this meal plan, but not only that, I've got your whole shopping list there. Um, so that just tells you everything that you need to buy and what you need to check your cupboards for that I've mentioned in the video. I think I've got everything, so hopefully that helps. And then I've tried to break down all the little prep bits for you, um, which this makes it look like loads, but honestly, it's not that much. Um, so anyway i've included a link to that so you can download the pdf if you feel so inclined um and i really hope it's helpful um let me know any feedback again i'm so sorry about the length of this video but i'll see you next time thanks again guys and if you liked it please hit subscribe and like the video because i do appreciate it and i'm sorry i took so long this time and next time it won't be so long i promise bye